Good afternoon, good evening. I am Dr. Eric Sharaev. I will continue teach psychology. Thank you, Tutor Dudes, for making it happen. I uh, will remind you that those of you who follow these lectures, we discuss uh, many topics in psychology. In particular, we're talking about developmental psychology issues, and uh, we already discussed childhood, we discussed adolescence, and today we will turn to adulthood. I will uh, repeat that uh, short 30-minute uh, video lecture is not enough for this great subject, and uh, I will choose only several important points as I say, I will highlight several important issues to make you more comfortable in studying this subject. Uh, most of you will read the book, uh, books assigned to you by me or by other professors. You will check the websites associated with the topic you study. If you study individually, you can uh, also follow uh, other instructions, uh, and including those I give you in this class. So it's just uh, my vision uh, of uh, this subject, this very important subject. Also at the end, uh, don't forget, there will be a five uh, question uh, quiz uh, available to you, PowerPoints, uh, will help you refresh your memories and uh, maybe somehow get yourself oriented better in the subject. So before I begin, this one, one short comment that uh, some people tell that, well, adolescence, well, it's not really, really a developmental psychology subject. It's adults or be people, just, uh, that, uh, well, they are mature enough. It's, it's childhood is what's interesting. And maybe, maybe it's aging is interesting, age, old age, but adulthood. Well, uh, that's a misconception because adulthood begins age 18 early or later, but it's approximately the ballpark of age 18 and lasts until the end of our lives. Uh, adult, uh, adulthood is a great process of change, of uh, development, of uh, uh, zigzagging, of sudden swings, stability, uh, of uh, learning, of unlearning. Of, this is a, it's, it's a, as rich, as unpredictable a process as uh, any other stage of our life. Today, I will uh, focus mostly on adjustment, so that the main subject of a lecture will be uh, our ability to respond to challenges of environment. And I think you'll find something interesting for yourself, interesting for yourself. Uh, no matter what you do in life, or what you study and what you plan to do, or just want to want to learn in this life, I hope this lecture will, will be useful. As always, I will share a screen with you. At the end, I'll come back to make concluding, st concluding statements. And also, we'll uh, refer several times to Tutor Dudes. It's an uh, education company that helps uh, us with, uh, with those videos and with other educational materials. Let me just uh, share with you a screen. And uh, this is, again, a subject of adulthood. Uh, yet I always circle the period of life, and you know this uh, this diagram which describes periods of life. And there we go. We talk about adult. Few important comments. I will make it brief, of course, but few important comments about the stages of life. You see, adult was early, middle, and late. For so many years in psychology, uh, it was a sort of a, um, an accepted view that. Uh, every uh, stage of adulthood, as well as, as childhood, adolescence, infancy, is supposed to, supposed to fit in, uh, in the matrix of certain requirements. You're supposed to do certain things. You're supposed to feel a certain way. You're supposed to understand things in a particular way, age-related. For example, early adulthood. During early adulthood, I talk about the perceptions, standard, traditional perceptions. Early adulthood, you finish your education, you start your family, you find yourself a job, you build your career, you make some savings, so you will strive for, for, for achievements and excellence, and that's what early adulthood is all about. See, right away, many of you say, well, wait a minute, I, this is what we're supposed to do, but this is a traditional view. Okay, middle adulthood, according to traditional view, 
is a period of stability and achievement. You build your family, you raise your children, you achieve excellence at your work, and, and you, you, based on your early adulthood, and then you achieve maximum uh, of your capacity, you uh, build, uh, you repair, you calculate, you write, uh, you uh, reach social status, achieve positions and titles. There, this is what you do, achieve your maximum. And then late adulthood, okay, you're supposed to, to slow down, you're supposed to retire, you're supposed to withdraw yourself from life activities, you're supposed to shrink in social way, in physical way, you're supposed to distance yourself from others, you're supposed to fade and fade away and so on. So wait a minute, this is what we're supposed to do? The 21st century, and there were signs early, of course, and I'm not saying that as well, this is a discovery of 21st century, not at all, but, but 21st century brought to us, to psychologists, like a profound understanding of, uh, of uh, insufficient, uh, insufficient uh, uh, strength uh, of uh, those theories about early, middle, late adult, because the life is not about what we're supposed to do. Life is, is about what we're supposed to do and what we can do, what we want to do. Want, want to do, what we, what we strive of doing, uh, what we hope of doing, right? Strive to do. For instance, uh, 21st century brought the idea that early adulthood is not necessarily about, about rapid uh, development of skills and finishing your education. You can continue your education. Well, many people don't like this, uh, but uh, yes, I think this is a fundamental right of human beings if you're 20, 25, and 30 to continue your education, to search for new ways of, of, of studying, a new venue, changing your major, changing your college, taking a pause, moving out, moving in, uh, to, to continue your, your, uh, your search for answers. Early adulthood is not, it's not about getting married. It's to terrify your grandparents. Uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're 18, 20, 25 year old, to terrify your grandparents, I would say that that's it's, it's assumption of a 20th 20 century and early generations that you got to get married. If you're, if you're a man, 25, my, my goodness, you got to get married. If you're a girl, if you're a young woman, 22, 23, you must get, how come my father, my father, still today says that, well, how is possible your son is, uh, is not married yet um, and he, he's supposed to get married? And uh, what's so daddy, that's a daddy, uh, why am I supposed to? People make the choices, people make the decisions and themselves and there's no limit. Okay, this is the age you get married and then this is the age you not get married. No? But in the previous generation, understand, there was a biological economic necessity. You must get married because you need to produce children, defenders, soldiers, mothers, because we need to, to survive somehow. It's no longer today, the issue today. There's no longer the issue today. And look at the tremendous increase in the uh, age of first marriage everywhere in the world. And especially in, in East Asia, especially in Europe, but East Asia in particular, Japan, South Korea, Singapore, uh, uh, Taiwan. So women, uh, women get married really late uh, and later, really later than, than the, their parents and grandparents. To, well, which, which terrifies grandparents because to their perception that, well, you're 21, you, you must get married. 21, you're late. No, of course not. Of course not. And so this is early, early adult, middle adult. So period of stability, stability, prosperity. Who sets so? the custom, the tradition, the expectation of early generation? We respect them. We love them. But they're wrong. Middle adulthood is, is a period of change, a period of expectations, period of, of uh, uh, search and, uh, and, and finding new answers and losing the answers and, and looking for something new, something new. I'm not saying you must uh, avoid stability, you must avoid uh, perfection, you must avoid prosperity. And no, no, no. 
if you if you love what you do that's wonderful but if you if you want to see want to want to change want to achieve better results in what you do in new things you do well this is this is this is perfect perfect pyramid adulthood for you uh you you've read from many sources as a middle life midlife crisis it's something which i check with my my friends uh in, who speak arabic and who speak mandarin cantonese speak russian so and uh, my, my fellow psychologists all over the world and they say well there's a common term midlife crisis and people who don't understand the, the subject they say we all smile say there's not such a thing midlife crisis the research doesn't support this the stereotypical perception of the midlife crisis is a time when you realize that life is short you haven't achieved things you, you had to achieve you made promises age 18 now you're 45 you haven't reached those uh well heights that you settled for yourself 20 years ago a uh, crisis crisis take place in on every stage of our life you can be 12 you can be 16 20 25 there are periods in which we find those confidence they're very individual of course there are age categories of course middle age makes makes well uh, the the fact of aging makes sense in us in 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 our lives makes sense in how we see ourselves and how we see our lives but um i'll tell you that most of my colleagues who study psychologists say that's a term the midlife crisis it's a made-up term it sounds nice for uh for literature for journalists to use it but uh, it's convenient to make sense but in fact and midlife crisis can happen in any period of your life and about late adult well okay retire and move over move over scoot over that's this next next kind of note. today and with we of course of course and uh, a very it's a big footnote even though i'll put it in the text if you will that's it all depends on where you live and what you do there are so many people today in the world who struggle struggle to, to economically politically socially uh struggle to survive it's close to one billion people today it's much well fewer of those to, to 20 years ago 10 years ago but still one billion people who live under the under the uh threshold of poverty in the world and poverty is today by un standards it's what 1.75 dollars per day per person it's, it's how much they, they goods and services they they get we understand understand for them for one billion people life is not uh described in the terms i described to you right now but for the uh, billions and billions of people today in the world in in china in japan in korea in india in africa in latin america in europe in russia in australia billions of people today late adulthood means well next stage of life you have savings you have uh, uh your health and the uh, life expectancy goes up and up and up in the world and healthcare services going up and up and up despite what the media tell you no it's just we live longer we are healthier yes we have setbacks we have covid we have other things but but people uh, especially in in developed countries say japan singapore taiwan many portions of middle east especially in 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 the gulf countries in india uh in in many 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 countries in africa and latin america of course in europe and latin in, in north america australia new zealand wealthy places you retire you 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 quit your your full-time position you do do something else you uh you don't retire you don't retire in my classes uh i teach uh to george mason uh, and uh, uh well my classes online or face to face i have students who come to me say professor i spent 25 years in the military now i'm finishing my master's degree and uh, I think of, of 20 years as a public school teacher, so I want to be a teacher. God bless you, I say, wonderful, you're right. The professor, just to say, I spent 20 years in the national security field. I've done my, my, my job, I love it, but now I take classes, I want to be a psychologist, I want to counsel. I want to take care of drug problems in our country, and this is what I'm going to do. And I see 15, 20 years of full-time employment. Yes, this is what you do. People retire, finish one type of activity at age age forty, and move on and study and have thirty years ahead of the minimum 
of productive, happy, successful work. Okay, you retire completely at age 60. You do nothing in terms of your professional but engagements, but you travel, you learn, you post things, you engage, just you participate in community activities for 30 years ahead of you. This is what late adult is all about. In uh, countries which a substantial uh, proportion of middle class families, middle class and, and upper middle class, uh, people over 65 are the wealthiest. <laughs> The biggest spenders, not like in the past, they would save, save, save because we need to give something to our children, grandchildren. No, because children, grandchildren would do much better than you do. They are more successful, they will be wealthier, more secure than you are. So that's why people over 65 spend, spend, and spend, and spend. Traveling, studying, learning, buying stuff, and then there's lots of, there's lots of activities available. You're a designer designed for people who are over 65. You are a teacher, teach classes for people over 65. They will pay money to learn something for themselves. And uh, especially it's important for psychology because people live longer and people over 65, over 70 need psychological services to help them with the memory, help them with the emotion, help them with depression, depression, unfortunately associated with age, with age, to help them with the addictions. Addiction also is a, is, is a huge problem among people of old age, and I'll uh, discuss this issue in my future lectures about addiction in young people and also in mature individuals, in the elderly as well. So this portion of my, my lecture, sorry for spending so much time, but it's, it's important point about the breaking stereotypes about what you're supposed to do as a human being. This refers to adolescents, they refers to children. Yes, there are certain standards certain expectations which are absolutely, absolutely undeniable, but also there are many things that we need to understand that that's, they are not about what you're supposed to do, what you want to do. And of course, understand this, you must do things that will be self-destructive and destructive to our society. Of course, it's, it's, a, it's a given. Uh, uh, adulthood, we discussed the early, middle, late, uh, from 18, 19, 20 onward, here is we achieve the status and we accept all norms, uh, accept the responsibilities uh, and we're supposed to accept responsibilities and norms of, of society. Here, this slide provides you with a life transition during, during adulthood, self-explanatory. You can always return to this slide and re-examine this. Uh, just uh, uh, very few uh, challenges that we face of the hundreds of challenges like typical marriage, divorce, birth of a child, migration, including immigration, adult children in the family who are leaving the nest, career change, retirements. Uh, well, those life transition, transitions are uh, subject that's studied by sociologists, but they ask us a question or questions referring to what happens to us psychologically during those life transitions. Uh, and we psychologists try to answer those questions. Uh, two things happen. And so I put some textual information for you to follow if you want to return and read this. Um, adjustment and coping. This is the focus of my, my uh, lecture today. And uh, adjustment is uh, changes that take place in us when we respond to changes uh, in the society and our environment around us. Coping is, is a deliberate conscious effort to, just, to change, adjust to uh, to challenges and, and to conditions that uh, take place. There's no clear line between adjustment and coping, but usually, usually uh, adjustment is a sort of an immediate response. It's cold outside, you go step outside, oh, it's cold, you come back and, and wear a jacket, or wear a coat, or so on. Coping is, it's cold outside, you step outside, oh, it's cold right now, but in two hours it will be hot, yeah, better, better not do anything. So I'll, 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 I'll be fine because I use my car anyway. So it's a more rational process. process. Um, I describe, uh, 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 it's important for psychologists, when you, for example, you're a counselor, you're a therapist, you work with a person who is 45, 55, 65. Uh, and so when you conduct an interview, for instance, uh, studying the problems you understand, type of problems person faces, uh, uh, they can, they differ from, uh, from standpoint of occurrence, duration, origin, significance, 
can be sudden, fast emerging, avoidable, inevitable, major. But we must understand it's uh, it's, uh, it's important to 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 categorize those, those problems. Um, the areas that uh, we deal with when we with which we deal when we study uh, adulthood and we help people with their psychological problems. Uh, problems refer to aging. Uh, uh, the, from the physical decline, it's a physical decline, it's, um, things change with our, with our age. Uh, cognitive decline, you know that memory starts declining at age 18. So your best memory when you're 18, when you're 19, 20, 21 memory, well, overall, just all skills go down, unless you practice, unless you improve them deliberately. deliberately. Uh, and many people uh, would not tell you but people begin to question their age uh, as early as, uh, as age 12, 13, 14, even early, but most of us begin to understand that we grow. Uh, and then, then especially those uh, significant cultural days at 18 and 20. So this understanding and anxiety and worry about getting older, getting older, you're 20, no longer 19, no longer teen, you're 25. They're 30. Oh my goodness, people, people, people look at this, look at the social media and it's what social networks and what people say is, oh my goodness, I'm turning 30, I'm old, right? No, same thing, oh, I'm 20, that's it. Goodbye, uh, my youth, I am getting older. So it's, it's age is, is, is a challenge for us. Physical illness, of course, it's, it's a huge challenge. Disability, family changes from marriage, divorce, moving in and out, members who are born, are longer with us, professional changes. Sociologists provide information about how many times uh, during lifetime Americans change their jobs. Now it's a little bit fewer than say 20 years ago. Interesting, the social mobility declines. Well, who knows? It's a uh, long-term tendency or maybe short-term. Relationships, oh my goodness. Breakups uh, and unfortunate marriages uh, or business deals that just don't go through and, and ruin the relationship. Social changes take place in societies. Uh, we live in a, in a relatively stable society compared to many other places. And I know we have, we have students, my heart goes out to them. It's my, my, many of my friends it's come from Afghanistan, from Syria, from Russia. Russia went through tremendous social changes back in the under, well, undergoing changes today. Uh, my, my fellow friends from Latin America, special Central American countries, uh, so you know what I'm talking about. It's uh, those changes are and sometimes expected, but most of them unexpected, tremendous. Look at look at, look at hurricanes, and earthquakes, and tsunamis that take place. Uh, and so we need to adjust, we need to cope, we need to survive through those changes. Uh, we in psychology uh, study the process of adjustments, and so uh, usually we discuss uh, approaching. You have a stressor. The factor uh, or events or serious events in your life that's uh, that's become meaningful. For example, facing breakup with a person you used to love. Right? Just unfortunately, it's I would say many people face this issue. So you you, you develop a relationship and then you realize that this person is is not uh, what you think she is or he is, uh, and so you either approach, you try to to. Uh, do something uh, affect your own feelings or change the person uh, who you used to love or still love uh, and uh, behavioral so just you do something or cognitive you think differently different understand this you may say that's it i don't no longer see him that's it fine that's it i promised i no longer see him or cognitive okay that's it I will see him, but I will not engage in any, any emotional discussion. That's it. So in my mind, I will talk business. That's it. I've got personal relationship. Avoiding, okay. And not necessarily it, it's always bad in our relationship uh, or in our businesses or, or in, our, in the business we do or in the relationship we maintain. Avoiding is, is, is not simply, not, not really, really uh, dealing with the issue. Uh, uh, we say, oh, don't avoid this, face it. Not necessarily. Sometimes avoiding is, is a solution, is a solution. Keeping oneself, oneself away from facing a challenge or a stress, basically, basically you isolate yourself. And many things in our life, if we avoid them, avoid them, 
they, they can go away, they, they disappear. Yet that's, but the, the issue is how to identify what is uh, that disappears and what is, does, what is that, 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 that stays with us. So remember, behavioral is about your actions. Cognitive about what you do mentally. So you can be with a person in the same room, but you, you simply ignore this person, right? So behaviorally, you, you just, you don't do anything, but cognitively, you simply ignore the person. Behaviorally, you stop going to meetings uh, with that person. And I'm talking about relationships with, with somebody. somebody. Uh, so this is again, a coping and adjustment issues. Uh, one of the important fa factors which always uh, generates interest in my classes and so the problem which uh, I uh, think that we all face, problem which we all face, procrastination putting off impending tasks to, to a later time. Uh, procrastination is, is about facing a challenge or challenge, a challenging situation or conditions or task, and then not resolving right now. Right? So you got an email from your professor or from somebody and there's a question right there and you're busy and it's a five o'clock and other things to do. And so you have a, well, you have a meeting with a friends or the sports game to watch. You're simply tired and it's, oh, I will answer tomorrow. You wake up tomorrow, oh, it's, that's a professor's email. I don't know what to do. Yeah, maybe in the evening I'll answer. Oh, it's, it will take maybe 20 minutes to think and, and answer. I will do it. And you procrastinate, procrastinate. And then, then you realize, oh my good professor, I'm sorry. I, and that procrastination, it's, it's, a, it's, it's something you need to do right now, or at least in the immediate future, but you don't do it. Uh, procrastination is, is uh, um, uh, could, be, could be situational, and it's not a big deal. It's, it's a healthy, it's a healthy thing to procrastinate because uh, sometimes you're busy in, in, indeed, and you can resolve something later, but chronic procrastination, uh, uh, and it is, is, is a personality trait. Uh, so you realize that so many of you right now realize that uh, uh, some people procrastinate once in a while, but others procrastinate all the time. Whatever problem you face at work, personal things and family issues, you just uh, well postpone it and then you face the avalanche of problems by by Monday, by Sun, by Sunday, to become it. We 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 can be quali uh, qualified as as procrastinators. Uh, we all procrastinate, but some of us procrastinate a level of ten, nine, eight, seven. So so you can find yourself uh, in in one of those categories. Procrastination procrastinators tend to create a false excuse that turning to their problem later is a better choice. Oh my goodness, I've studied procrastination. I know how many excuses we, we formulate. I'm busy right now. Oh, my mind doesn't work this way this right now. Oh, it's unpleasant. I'm just now this weekend, only pleasant things for me. On Monday, I'll do unpleasant things. Oh, well, 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 I'm so tired. I'm so tired, I'm so exhausted. I will not deal with this right now. So, and every day, every case is new excuse for us. Research finds that procrastinators tend to carry uh, uh, accompanying feelings of guilt, shame, anxiety associated with the constant choice of delay. That's, that's a problem. Not only do we procrastinate, we feel guilty, we feel ashamed, we feel horrible about what we haven't done, uh, what we were supposed to do in, in, uh, in uh, our, our life. One thing is positive, please pay attention. Uh, it must be said that some procrastinators act more efficiently when they work under time pressure. There are some of us, and I hope, I hope you're one of those, uh, that we work better when we, we face a deadline. For instance, you have a paper to write by Monday, and today is Thursday. You've got many things to do, but you said, no, I'll write it on Sunday. And on Sunday, you dedicate two hours, three hours, four hours to a paper, you sit down, turn off everything, you don't respond to your, to your messages, don't check uh, YouTube videos, you just go and do it within three and a half hours. This is what uh, some of us can do. If you're one of those individuals, well, that, that's fine, that's fine. In fact, you can practice this skill in yourself, and one of my future lectures will be dedicated to this deep work concept. 
that if you can train yourself to dedicate chunks of your day, 30 minutes, two hours, six hours in a row, when you can focus on one assignment, one thing, uh, is it a home repair or paper or some accounting issue for, at, at, your, at your work? If you can dedicate yourself to this, to this uh, uh, task without checking your messages constantly, uh, that's fine. And that type of procrastination will be fine when you postpone your task to a later time and you, you dedicate this in the future. Again, uh, I said I'll return to those issues in one of my lectures in the future about how to organize your time and how to make things efficient uh, for yourself. Uh, and uh, whatever, how old you are doesn't matter, 12-year-old, 14-year-old, 19-year-old, or 65-year-old uh, grown-up adult procrastination. So, uh, of course, um, in uh, our adjustments problems, I'll get back to this slide. I'll tell you briefly about this. Uh, that's uh, we, uh, uh, in psychology, uh, designate a special category of problems we call adjustment disorder associated with a person's chronic, persistent, constant inability uh, to cope with a major uh, life stressor. Yes, it is. It's not an exaggeration. It's not just a um, wild imagination of some psychiatrists. No, the, we, 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 we diagnose adjustment disorder, a problem which um, not many people face, but there are some individuals who cannot cope with the sudden changes. Most of us, in most cases, we adjust successfully with some problems, but we adjust successfully. But uh, in, in person's inability to adjust, we call, we call it adjust, uh, we call it uh, uh, adjustment disorder. Disorder uh, associated with a loss of job, divorce, a divorce, or a migration. Uh, I, I am one uh, who studied psychology of immigration. I studied psychological changes take place in people who immigrate uh, to the United States and what happens to them. About ten percent of people who are immigrants, 10%, uh, uh, developed what we call so-called adjustment disorder, we call it uh, acculturation disorder. So adjustment disorder, basically, it's, it's significant psychological changes, negative changes that take place due to their inability to adjust to American society. 90% of people, mostly people of older age. Most of them are the older age. 10% of immigrants, but most of them of older age. This is what I've studied in the past. In the past, uh, in a positive uh, uh, context, uh, there's an interesting personality trait called hardness. Uh, your uh, general ability to withstand difficult conditions, and uh, some of us uh, have this feature present in most life situations. You can challenge and you can defeat the problems, resolve the issues, uh, no matter what they are. Car repair. Uh, traffic accidents, college issues, personal relationship, uh, working with a, with, a, with a store manager uh, is resolving some dispute in terms of pricing. So you can, you can with, with, withstand those problems in, in, in most of those situations. And, and this is a personality trait. You can develop this trait, by the way, uh, in yourself. Uh, it takes some effort, some determination, but you can develop hardness in yourself. Uh, it is true that some, some of us are born with the predisposition to, to develop hardness, to, to overcome the problems, but mostly, as research shows, it's uh, something we learn in our life, in our family, from our mothers and fathers, from our family members, from our best friends, and also in our life circumstances, especially if you serve, uh, if you work in the conditions which require your constant uh, ability to overcome problems. And so many of you who serve, many of you who, uh, well, if you've got a firefighter, if you're a nurse, uh, you know what I mean about this. It's just, you solve problems on a daily basis, daily basis. Uh, and so, uh, negative side, please learn about catastrophic thinking. For psychologists, this is a, a subject to study and also to work with because catastrophic thinking is a type of, uh, of thinking and becomes part of our personality, which is about pessimism. Uh, it's about seeing things from a negative perspective all the time. The rain outside, it's, it's horrible. The wind's horrible. Sunshine is too bright. Traffic is too many cars. No traffic, where do people go? Where do they go? 
So it is always about about negative, uh, about defeat, about uh, delays, about suffering. It's it's in part biological, in part, but mostly it's developed during a lifetime. So some of us are dispositional, dispositional pessimists. Dispositions are personality traits, and we become become pessimists during our life. And this is a very stable feature, by the way. People who become pessimists. And this feature develops um, approximately by the age 18 and 20, give or take a few years, and becomes stable. Uh, think about that. I, I guarantee that you can find one or two people or more in your life right now who are dispositional pessimists, who are seeing things from a negative perspective all the time, all the time. But I will finish uh, the class on a positive note that uh, studying adulthood brought uh, psychology a wonderful opportunity to study happiness. I am surprised that happiness wasn't a focus of psychology uh, studies in psychology for so many years. Philosophers, yes. Anthropologists, yes. Uh, literature specialists, yes. Poetry, art, happiness, but not in psychology. Only, I would say, for 30 years ago, it's, a, it's nothing for history. But 30 years ago, especially 20 years ago, psychologists began to study happiness. Uh, and simple question was, why do we feel happy? How to make sure that we feel happier than unhappy? And are there people who are born to be happy? And what factors affect our happiness? And I'll give you a very brief discussion of this. And uh, when we study uh, mental illness, and so when we discuss therapy, I will return to the subject again. Uh, genetics. True, uh, it's true. There are lots of uh, interesting studies uh, past 25 years in neuroscience are suggesting that, yes, um, some of us are born with slight push from the environment to be on the happier side. I'll give you 25. It's, it's very, very informal. Please, please, don't. It's very informal. 25% of the weight, so genetics, affects your happiness. So some of us are born happy or unhappy. In my family, my mother's side, everybody is, is a happy person. On my father's side, unfortunately, the opposite. Uh, circumstances. Uh, if you're unemployed, if you lost uh, your, uh, your, your best friend due to, say, tragic accident, uh, if you have to migrate and leave everybody behind. So how can you be happy for a significant period of time, period of life, uh, circumstances? Or also happiness, if you're lucky, if you have a great job and great compensation, wonderful friends, wonderful family, how can you not be happy, right? But the most important, more than in our life, 50% of, of weight here, our personal efforts. Uh, psychologists agree with the scholars of religion, by the way, those who say that happiness is within ourselves. And no matter what your genes are and how your DNA works, no matter what the circumstances are, there are people among us who grew up in the toughest conditions, who grew up in the most unfortunate circumstances in life, and yet they're happy. And there are some of us who grew up with a silver spoon, we say in their mouth, they have everything, wealth and fame and resources and opportunities and books and teachers, and yet they are the happiest people in the world. It's most important to understand that we can, we can defeat uh, the circumstances, we can challenge our genetics, and we become happy if we, if we dedicate our effort to become happy. I will uh, stop here in this, uh, in this uh, statement and say that this is, of course, an incomplete discussion of adulthood. I focus only mostly on periods of life and expectations and uh, coping and adjustment. But uh, after you uh, check uh, the questions uh, which are available for this, this section of uh, my lectures about adulthood, uh, I hope you will learn more about this and you'll retain more and you can think more about yourself and your future and your past. And I believe this information will be not only useful for your exams, but also for your personal, personal ability to be happy and make other people, people happy. So thank you to the dudes for uh, making this, this available and recording this, this uh, video. 
uh, I will see you later and so during my other lectures and we'll study mental illness, mental health, and many other issues associated with human psychology. Thank you so much. It was Eric Shrive. I will see you later.